What is giving you hope right now? History, actually. Um, that is a, a question that I grapple with frequently. Uh, when students, which you know, uh, that question gets raised by students fairly often as well, uh, I always say uh, I have a particular brand of hope, and it is the ver variety of hope found uh, among boxers going into the late round. And what I mean by that is that we often in the society talk about optimism and we talk about hope, but we talk about cheap versions of those ideas. We don't talk about a kind of optimism that is weather-beaten, uh, that is worn, uh, that has absorbed difficulty and lost a few rounds and been knocked down. And it's the kind of optimism that, uh, that I think comes from uh, the tradition of the struggles that we've been talking about all this evening, uh, where you don't think, you think that it is possible to achieve your objectives, but you don't at all overlook the immense difficulty and the immense uh, pain and, and the suffering and obstacles that will be in your path toward achieving it, but believe deep down that you still have what it takes to surmount those obstacles. That's what I look at. I look at the struggles of the people who had really no basis. They couldn't justify their optimism, you know, for that enslaved person to say, uh, one day I will no longer be a slave. Uh, that's an audacious idea, and I think that that's what I hold on to uh, in the most difficult points and stretches that we encounter now. Wow. Jill, what, what's giving you hope right now? Yeah, you know, my dad in the 1930s uh, played baseball with a group of childhood friends and uh, their whole lives, these guys played poker every Tuesday night. And the last of these guys, um, a wonderful man died this year. And I uh, was looking at my, with my siblings at a photograph of, of, of all these guys from the 1930s and doing their baseball thing. Um, and uh, I thought about the day of the funeral, all the grandchildren of those guys um, and what good people they are and what good things they've done in the world. And I, some of them are now having children. And I, I, I guess I just don't feel like the despair seems like a luxury um, when I think about the sacrifices that those guys made in their lives. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's just that moment at a funeral when your eyes are downcast and you can barely look up and then you catch the glance of a child or grandchild of the person who's being buried and you have a sense that time marches on and is carried forward by the goodness of the best of people. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is a lovely way to end our conversation.